Are you guys ready for 20, 2021? Who's ready for 2021? Come on. This is going to be an amazing year. I am so excited what God's going to do this year. It's going to be so incredible. You know, 2020, I think it was a great year, and I looked at all the good things that God did, and he's going to continue to do good things. We need to remember that God is good always, all the time. No matter what's going on in life, no matter what we're going through, no matter what happens, God is good all the time. And that's what we need to focus on, the goodness of God, not the negativity in our life or the things. We're going to have ups and downs. But as I showed, shared last week, that the Lord gave me a vision of this engine running. And I feel like we, the church, are the engine that's running. And if we continue to set powerful people beneath us that we're accountable to, every time we get down, we hit that powerful person that brings us right back up. It's just like an engine that's running in, in, in unison. So just keep that in mind for this year, because this is the year of focus, and God is having us focus on what he wants for each and every one of us individually, focus on the things that are good, focus on what's right, focus on the changes that you need to have for your life, and the goodness that God has for you. And we thank God that, that the, the COVID epidemic is getting behind us, and that we're moving forward into this next season of what, what God has for us. And we're so thankful for him and who he is and who, who he is in us. He's just so amazing. So this year, I want you guys to try to focus more on not the negative things that go on in life, but the positive things. Be encouraged in those positive things because it's so powerful to stay in a positive mindset and not in a negative mindset. And I challenge you this year, stay on Facebook. Because there's so many lies. I mean, if you got to get on there to network and to reach people and to see what your family's doing, but what everybody else is doing, forget about it because that can take you down and keep you down. And you know, that's why I'm not on there. If you don't see me on there, I'm just not. I might, I might like something my kids put on there or something, but I don't, I don't stay on it because there's just so much negativity. And so, I mean, you know, I, I really don't care if you're on vacation, and I really don't care, you know. If your refrigerator quit running and all these things, I just don't care. I don't, I don't have time to think about all those things. So this year, focus on who you are and whose you are, how God is reaching you individually and specifically. And stay for the end of, end of the message. We're going to do a powerful uh, prophetic event, and uh, we feel like God is just in this whole thing. And we have a powerful testimony that's going to be given um, after Tammy's message. So Tammy is one of our pastors at Life of Love Ministry, so let's just welcome her. <laughs> so, yes, good morning. good morning. And I know they've said it before, but I want to say it. Happy New Year. <laughs> That's right. It's a new year. It's a, a time of new beginnings, and we're stepping into that, all that the Lord has for us. So as I was praying about what the Lord would have me share with you this morning, I felt like uh, I heard him say his presence and that we that he is taking us into a greater glory. Isn't that good? Yes, a greater glory. That's what he has for us. And it reminded me of the verse 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Isn't that good? But that's what he's doing with each one of us. I remember years ago, um, just really going through a difficult time and being overcome with disappointment and feeling a hopelessness. And as I was sharing that with a friend of mine, she said, so you don't really think that things are going to get better? <laughs> And she reminded me, she said, God takes us from glory to glory. And the light bulb went on. You know, I, I thought, that's right. That is so right, from glory to glory. And I had to move from a place of doubt and unbelief into a place of trust. When um, we were here on New Year's Eve, and Pastor Shelley had shared um, on that night that the Lord was speaking to her about how we're to come into his rest. And I think that's so true. You know, we have to um, just come to a place where we trust him, we can rest in him, and especially after the last year that we've had, it, it truly was a struggle. I don't know about all of you, but I know that I definitely went through just some times of, of fear and questioning and just 
really having to press into the Lord and believing him for his word and his promises. You know, he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so that's how we defeat those things that are going on in our lives, those lies that maybe the enemy is trying to convince us of, is to just replace all those things with his truth. So no matter what is going on in our lives or in the world around us, we have to believe that God is for us. We need to believe his word is true so we can enter that place of trust and rest. Isaiah 30, 15 says, For this is what the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength. So that lets me know that for me to be at peace in my salvation, in my life, I need to be in right standing with him. I need to keep short accounts of sin in my life and come to a place of repentance, a changing of our mind. And to know that my strength comes from a place of being still and knowing that he is God, a place of trust. God is so good and so kind. And another great scripture is Romans 2, 4. Do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and restraint and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? And I just love that, you know, that God's always kind. He's always good. He's always loving. No matter what's going on, once again, in our lives, he wants to just bring us into that closer, more intimate relationship with who, who he is in us and through us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father. And, um, you know, when you are struggling in er any area, the Lord tells us that we can come to him and we can cast our burdens on him because he cares for us. One of my all-time favorite verses is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, do not worry about anything. That's a command. <laughs> if you don't realize that, it's actually a command. Do not worry. Do not be anxious, some versions say. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I know that I'm always encouraged when I think about what God's done in my life. You know, you can be in certain situations and, and you sometimes might ask, you know, God, where are you in this? It doesn't take long to know that he's with you when you just remember the past and how he's brought you through trials and tribulations to show himself strong for you and to be there with you always. He tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he loves you with an unfailing and everlasting love. So I'm always encouraged when I think of what God's done in my life, and there's such power in the testimony. The Bible tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And when we give our testimony, even if it's just between you and the Lord, reminding yourself of what God's done in your life, you get the attention of heaven. <laughs> you really do. I don't know about you, but when I began to thank the Lord, I feel a shift in the atmosphere around me. I can feel his peace. I can feel his pleasure. I can feel just his love, you know, being poured out. And so I encourage you to take that time and to just really thank him for all of the great and mighty works that he's done in your life and to experience that peace that washes over your heart and your mind. It guards you. I love that, to know that it's his peace that protects us, protects our thinking, protects our mind, will, and emotions. It's an incredible thing. You know, and I've had people say, um, well, they couldn't think of anything good in their lives. 
And so I encourage you that if that's you, if you have a hard time thinking of just good things in your life, ask the Lord to truly change your perspective, to give you new eyes, to see your life through his eyes of goodness and mercy and grace, and to renew your mind, you know, to actually, I love, yeah, Romans, isn't it 12, 2, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, and we need to stay in a constant place of where we're doing just that. We're allowing the, the word of God to change us, to transform us, and to be um, the person that he's created us to be. I listened to Lance Well now yesterday, and I heard him say that we need to pray the solution, not the problem. Isn't that good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It keeps us in a place of hope and encouragement. When we focus on the problems, that can just keep us down. You know, it can keep us in a place of, of despair, of discouragement, of, of disappointment. And so we can't go there. We can't. Once again, we are commanded, <laughs> you know, do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And so that's what we do. We go to him, and we just pray the solutions. And I just thought that was such a good suggestion. And I think that it also helps us to remember, you know, also the, the authority that God has given us. You know, the Bible tells us that God has given us authority over all the works of the enemy. And so when you realize that and pray the solutions, pray the promises of God, you're actually activating the word of God in your life. You're activating those angels to go forth and war for you. So what does all this have to do with his presence? I believe we need to have an attitude of gratitude and thankfulness to experience his presence on an ongoing basis. There was a message that Bill Johnson preached years ago, and it was about walking with the dove in mind, meaning the Holy Spirit. It was about living our lives in such a way that if we had a dove on our shoulders, it wouldn't fly away. <laughs> it would remain with us. And so that lets me know that we need to walk in kindness and gentleness and love and so on and just truly let the Lord be Lord in our lives. And I also think that God wants us to ask, to seek, and to knock. I love Matthew 7, 7, and it says that when we, when we ask, we receive and keep on receiving. I love that, you know, that we keep on receiving. It's not a one-time thing. You know, he continually gives to us. And uh, it also says that when you seek, you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open for you. And his word says that when we seek him, we find him. So be assured that he wants to be found by you. He absolutely does. So I asked the Lord what he meant by greater glory. And I believe he showed me that there are some of us that have been walking in a measure of his glory but don't really know how to carry more. Especially since the immersion revival, I feel like he was showing me that we've received a fresh infilling, a new impartation, a cleansing to walk in more of him. But how do we do that? And so I was just asking him about um, just that. You know, Lord, help us to walk in the fullness. Help us to walk in that greater glory. And the Lord reminded me that years ago, he had asked me to pray that the pegs of my tent would be expanded so that I could actually carry more of his presence in my life to operate out of more of his love for the people around me. And so Isaiah 54, 2 says, enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. Isn't that good? <laughs> that the Lord wants to pour out more. You know, he wants us to be able to carry more. So I believe the Lord is expanding our capacity for more, to carry more of his glory, the greater glory.
The Lord reminded me of a time when his glory came upon me when I was uh, newly baptized with the Holy Spirit. I remember being in a church service and the Holy Spirit coming on me so strong that I was, you know, some people say slain in the spirit. I was out, <laughs> you know, up at the altar and uh, just under the presence of the Lord and definitely not functioning well. You know, just being in a place of receiving what the Lord had for me and knowing that at that time uh, he was changing me. It was an incredible encounter uh, and there were many. And it was just for me, it was like uh, there was just a period of time where the Lord was truly bringing a lot of healing and restoration in my life. And so I did receive that, you know, at the time. And uh, <laughs> then I would go to church and after a period of time I remember going and not feeling the heaviness like I had and just wondering was there something wrong with me <laughs> because I wasn't being slain in the spirit and so I asked the Lord about that and he said that he needed me to be able to function under the glory of the Lord to be able to pray for others and that he was teaching me how to walk in that to experience his presence, to know his glory, but to actually be able to minister to others in that. And so I feel like that's um, a big part of where we're at and where we're going, that he's teaching us how to just walk in the greater glory that he has for us, to function under that weight of his presence. So I feel like there are many of us that are going to be walking in a greater glory as we minister to God's people. I truly believe that. As I was praying last night, preparing this message, I just saw how the Lord was going to just empower each and every one of us to pray for the sick, to see those greater miracles, the signs and wonders that he has. We have a dying world around us that desperately needs Jesus. And you are a God encounter for those that you cross paths with. And so I just truly believe, once again, you know, you're going to feel his presence. But I think the key is going to be just the miracles that we're going to see in that greater glory that we're actually walking in. Another Bill Johnson quote, your shadow releases what overshadows you. Isn't that good? <laughs> I love that, you know, because God overshadows us. He, we take shelter in the shadow of his wings. He's our strong tower, you know, our fortress. And so when we walk with him, he overshadows us. And don't you love the stories in the New Testament about Paul, you know, walking through crowds of people and how his shadow would fall upon those and they would be healed and they would receive freedom. And I believe we're going to experience that. I truly do as we surrender and as we just uh, are totally sold out to the Lord and just allowing him to flow in us and through us for his greater glory. Thank you, Lord. So for those of you that might feel inadequate, I want to remind you of the scripture, Isaiah 42, 3. A bent reed he will not break off, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. So no matter how far away or distant you may feel from God, you can know that he's always with you and that he will, he will not destroy you. You know, he wants to prosper you. Second Timothy 1, 6, and 7 and the Passion Translation says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire of the Holy, of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands on you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. And when I read that verse uh, years ago, well, I remember asking the Lord to fan and to flame the gifts within me. But if you read that again, <laughs> it says that we are responsible to fan that flame. It says you 
need to fan the flame that is within you, those gifts. And so I feel like one way that we do that, I know for me personally, if I'm feeling um, that I need to just get closer with the Lord, I will just spend more time with him. And I also feel like uh, in order to fan those gifts into full flame, we need to step out and take risk to let God minister to others through us. And just a funny little story. Years ago when I was homeschooling, the, the children, we were in a homeschool group, and there was a lady in the group that she just really rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> she would irritate me. And uh, I just didn't really like spending much time with her. And at that time, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. That's right. And so I knew that it was a problem. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I need you to help me with this. And I need you to give me a love for her. Within minutes, here she comes. <laughs> and she said, hey, let's go to lunch. And I thought, oh, no, <laughs> that's not what I meant. You know, I wanted to love her from a distance. <laughs> I didn't want to go have lunch, but I thought, okay, God, all right, you know, you're in this. I ask to love her. And so we went out to lunch, and it was such a good time. It really was. It just helped me to see her in new eyes, with new eyes, you know, through the Lord's eyes, because he loves her. He adores her. And so it just really, once again, it helped to hear her story, to understand where she was coming from, and maybe why, you know, she did some of the things that she did. And I truly did come away from that lunch loving her and just thanking the Lord for that opportunity, you know, to be stretched in that way. <laughs> That's right. So... Um, just an encouragement, you know, once again, how do we experience more of God's glory? How do we experience more of his presence? And I know for me, it takes getting along with him. It takes my favorite worship songs, you know, just singing and just feeling his presence come in and fill the room. It takes reading his word and journaling the things that he's saying to me through his word. It takes being vulnerable and honest with the Lord and intently listening to his voice and willing to change the things in my life that need to be changed. <clears throat> it takes being obedient to use the gifts that are within us, like going out and sharing the gospel with others praying with the people that God allows to cross your path, stepping up to give God opportunities to flow through you to others. And that was another point I wanted to make. I remember um, years ago being at New Community, the church there, and there was a, a lady that had gone up to the altar, and, and she had uh, cancer. She had a diagnosis of cancer. And I remember struggling with that, thinking, that I didn't have enough in me, enough power, enough faith, you know, to go and pray for cancer. Headache, bring me a headache, you know, no problem. <laughs> or a cold, yeah, not an issue. You know, I, I had the confidence to pray for that. And so as I was just sitting there kind of weighing all these things together with the Lord, um, don't you love his gentle rebukes <laughs> and his correction and how he said that he was in me, you know, no less, he's no less in us. Uh, he's an almighty God that flows through us. And I heard him say, and this just wrecked me, he said, won't you give me an opportunity? And I thought, oh, wow, Lord, yes. <laughs> you know, so we have to get out of the way and just give God those opportunities to use us in our lives to bless the lives of others and to let that healing flow through us, to let that freedom flow through us. Uh, his comfort and peace, whatever it is that he's wanting to minister to that individual. And I love how Jason had shared with us recently um, about talking with Andrew and how Andrew said that we needed to move from hosting the presence to housing the presence. Isn't that good? <laughs> That's right. We don't want to just have him come for a party every now and then. 
but we want him to inhabit, to dwell, to take up residence in, in us and in this house at Life of Love. So the Lord wants that for each one of us, to house his presence um, and to actually increase. Psalm 27, 13 in the New King James Version says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that is so powerful. It's once again, one of my favorite scriptures that God has that for us. He wants each and every one of us to experience his goodness in this land. And so, Lord, thank you for that. So I want to encourage you to seek him out, to be filled with his presence. Ask him to expand the capacity for more. Fan and flame those gifts that he's placed within you and experience his greater glory as he transforms you from glory to glory. And so I'd like to release a prayer over you today. And so if you would just you know, prepare your hearts to receive this. And uh, some of it is from Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 8. I know that the worship team has been singing lately, the blessing, and I love that. And I just really felt like the Lord said he wanted to bless his children this year uh, as we go into 2021 and just to walk in everything that he has for us. And so let me pray this over you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that your children will experience all that you have for them, that they will have divine encounters with you and your love. I pray that, they, that all they put their hand to do will prosper for your glory, and may every area of their lives be blessed. Father, I ask that each one will embrace your presence in their lives, and that this year will be the best year yet as you wrap your glory around their lives and that they will encounter you like never before. So, Father, I release your word of blessing over them. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which he gives you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And Lord, we're believing that for our nation. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be with the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, and the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you and your storehouses in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord is giving you. So, Lord, we pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. So good.